Good afternoon and thank you CVI Digital 2020 for the opportunity to present our case as one of the finalists titled Deep Venous Arterialization for No Option Critical Limb Ischemia in COVID-19 Era and the Role of Social Media. Our patient is a 62-year-old male with history of CAD, COPD, insulin-dependent diabetes, legally blind from diabetic retinopathy, has already had a right BTK and presented with critical limb ischemia and gangrenous ulcers on the dorsum of his left foot. On presentation angiogram, AT is occluded, TP trunk is occluded, perineal and PD arteries are also occluded, AT reconstitutes in mid-calf, but the DP is occluded in mute foot with very poor runoff at the foot level and essentially a dessert foot. He underwent uh, orbital astrectomy of the AT with a 1.25 millimeter micro crown and intravascular ultrasound guided angioplasty of the proximal to mid AT with a 3 millimeter chocolate balloon and DP angioplasty with a 2.5 millimeter nano cross balloon with this result. At two weeks, he only had modest improvement in his TCPO2, which was deemed not to be adequate for wound healing due to small vessel disease and deep venous arterialization seemed to be the last resort in order to preserve his limb. He had not performed DVA before and given travel restrictions due to COVID-19, there was not an opportunity to observe a case or have a proctor for the procedure. We discussed these limitations and obtained patients written permission to discuss his case with ward experts via social media platforms. After receiving input from several experts, the DVA was strategically planned. DVA of the TP trunk or PT artery to the posterior tibial vein was planned. DVA of the AT was not attempted because AT was the only runoff vessel despite the presence of a small vessel disease at the foot level, which we didn't want to compromise. And a stain interluminal in the proximal TP trunk and PT was deemed critical to create a functional shunt without compromising the AT. So here are the DVA steps, anterograde left CFA axis established, popliteal angiogram showed significant recall of the proximal AT and contralateral projection identified the proximal knob of the TP trunk. Using command 014 wire and a CXI 014 support catheter, PTCTO was crossed as shown on uh, the third column and interluminal wire position in the proximal one third of the PT was confirmed with intravascular ultrasound. The proximal AT was stented with a uh, Corner DES and balloon angioplasty of the left TP trunk and PT was performed with a 3 mm balloon. Left posterior tibial vein axis was established and a 5-6 French cylinder sheet was placed in the posterior tibial vein. Simultaneous arteriogram and flibrogram was performed in the site of fistula creation as you can see in the hollow arrow in the proximal posterior tibial was decided. The next step an 018 wire was placed in the posterior tibial vein, which made posterior tibial vein identification and reentry easier with the Pioneer device. A Pioneer plus reentry device was advanced through the arterial axis and the artery was punctured into the vein, and a 300 centimeter miracle pros 3 wire was advanced into the vein. The fistula site was dilated with a 3.5 millimeter NC balloon and a 3.5 by 26 millimeter graft master cover stem was used to cover the fistula. The posterior tibial vein was dilated with a 5 mm balloon and then stented with a 5 by 250 mm wire bond stent with a few millimeters of overlap with the graft master to just above the ankle. There was a distal valve in the posterior tibial vein at the level of the laciniated ligament that would not dilate despite using 3.5 and 4 mm cutting balloons, scoring balloons, and high pressure NC balloons up to 30 atmospheres. And even with the piercing technique in which external destruction of the valve with several punctures with the 21 gauge needle was attempted as shown here, this valve was destructed with nominal inflation of the 4 mm Wolverine balloon and robbing the valve against the balloon from the outside. Further angioplasty of the lateral plantar vein and was performed through the midfoot with the 4 mm Wolverine balloon and final angiogram as you can see here showed excellent result with successful fistula creation. Food Doppler the following day showed Doppler over fistula and excellent shunt volume of 241 milliliter per minute at the posterior tibial vein. In conclusion, desperation breeds innovation. Here we present planning a complex endovascular procedure for the first time by consulting experts via social media. Social media platforms such as Twitter provide a unique opportunity to collaborate worldwide, discuss complex cases, and seek experts' opinions. 
we encourage our colleagues to be involved in such platforms while respecting patients' privacy rights. And thank you for your attention.